Welcome inside another crossover edition, Locked on Packers, Locked on Eagles. Thanks for making Locked on Packers and Locked on Eagles your first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. In today's episode, our crossover is presented to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun, easy to use, and the best thing is you don't have to compete against me or Louis DiBiase, who's here from Locked on Eagles. You just have to compete against the number. Just the number. You pick two players who you think are going to score more or less than their prize picks projections. You can win up to 10 times your money. First time users can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com with the promo code locked on. Louis DiBiase, locked on Eagles. Peter Bukowski from locked on Packers. Maybe I should say our names at the top. That's what a good host would do to open the show. Louis, uh, this is a game that looks much more. Uh, I would say juicy around week three. Yeah. It looks a lot less juicy now because the Packers did not hold up their end of the bargain in terms of coming into this game as NFC contenders. Still, still Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. They still got a pretty talented team. This is still the team that scared the life out of Cowboys fans for a full week, not that long ago. And it turned out they were right to be afraid. So what is the biggest story right now in Eagles nation? Fly Eagles fly, obviously. Yeah, I think right now it's trying to hold on for dear life to that one seed. And it's crazy to say it in those terms, considering they're nine and one and they had an eight and no start for the first time in franchise history. But you look at the Minnesota Vikings are right behind them right now. You look at the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants have seven wins in the division. The Washington Commanders even are in last place in the NFC East and they are six and five and they're on fire right now with Taylor Heineke at quarterback. So it's really just kind of staying ahead and trying to secure home field advantage because we saw when they won the Super Bowl in 2017, how important that was to have the playoffs run through Lincoln Financial Field. It's crazy though, Peter, they're not competing with the Green Bay Packers in this race. Heading into the season, we all knew the Eagles had a certain floor but the Packers were one of those measuring stick teams that I thought when you get into the playoffs, is that a team you can hang with? And it's crazy that Green Bay is not really with them right now. It's funny you mentioned floor because yeah. I thought for sure the Packers had a floor that would make you say, OK, this is a 10 win team for sure. Right. And then the question is, can you get to 11, 12, 13 again without Devontae Adams? Like I thought you take Devontae Adams off this off this team. It's going to take some time for Christian Watson to get acclimated, for Romeo Dobbs to get acclimated. You have David Bakhtiari coming back off injury. You've got Elton Jenkins coming off an ACL, mm -hmm. Robert Tunyon coming off an ACL. All right, they can lean on their run game and their defense. And Aaron Rodgers is the two-time reigning MVP. Well, guess what? Aaron Rodgers not playing like a two-time reigning MVP. The defense not playing anywhere near what we thought they would be. And now they're without Rashawn Gary, who I think would have been huge in this game. He is someone who can single-handedly take over a game and wreck it. And the the defensive coordinator is someone that Packer fans have lost all confidence in. And so uh, th this is a team that is just in all facets, really, not lived up to expectation. The only player that has been the guy that we thought he would be coming into this season is Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones has been unbelievable. Yep. He's been even better than we've seen him. And he had like 20 touchdowns a couple years ago. I think he's actually been better this season as a true runner. But because the Packers are not in these games late, he's not getting the same sort of opportunities. Like in 2019, 2020, they're winning all these games. So right. he gets, you know, he gets 12 second half carries just because the Packers are up 10 points. Well, he's not getting those same opportunities this year. And, and that is that is the weird part here. These are two teams that feel like, to me, they're headed in opposite directions. The Eagles are For the sure. young ascendant team, um, and the Packers are the team that is showing signs of age, showing signs of decline, and I think they declined way faster than we thought they would. Just outside looking in, Louis, as you watch this Packers team, what stands out to you? Like, what are the storylines that you are most interested in? I mean, it always goes back to quarterback because to me, Peter, you look at the last time these two teams played in 2020, it was one of the darkest days in Eagles history. They had benched quarterback Carson Wentz. It felt mm. like the plug was finally pulled. And there were so many questions left unanswered with the long-term future of the team. They were left in total darkness. And it was unexpected that Wentz would drop off like that to see where they are now in their situation, a quarterback where Jalen Hurts has pretty much made you completely forget about that spot. And the Packers are the team that are almost in this hole with the reigning two-time MVP at quarterback is, I guess it's 
you know, unpredictable, but yet the NFL is unpredictable and it's predictable in that way by nature. So maybe it shouldn't shock us completely, but I just, I can't believe even without Devontae Adams that Aaron Rodgers is, he just doesn't look the same. And of course, a support system is always so important to a quarterback. We're seeing night and day Jalen Hurts with A.J. Brown this year and all the weapons compared to where he was last year as a passer. But at the same time, a two-time MVP, I feel like it's supposed to elevate to a certain degree. And it just doesn't seem like he's making the same plays that he would, again, even removing Adams from the equation. So I just think it's really interesting to see the spot these two teams are in at quarterback. Because I think heading into the season, you probably would have predicted it being the opposite way. It's interesting. You mentioned that 2020 game, and I was thinking about that a lot this week. The Packers in that game, that was one of those where it felt like against a rookie quarterback, the Packers, from the Packers standpoint, they felt like, you know, and that was a, that ended up being a two score game, right? It was not uh, a game that was really ever in doubt, but in the second half, the Packers let the Eagles make some plays. Jalen Hurts made some throws. Um, and got a little frisky, and that was before we knew Jalen Hurts could play at the level that he's currently right. playing at, right? We didn't know he could be a, a legitimate NFL starting quarterback. Um, and I think a lot of Packer fans came out of that game going, yeah, it was nice to get a win, but, like, that's not great. Like, mm-hmm. you kind of would have liked to play better against Jalen yeah. Hurts. And and that was part of the, the Mike Patton, that end of that season was when the Packers really started to make some more plays. I think Jalen Hurts threw, threw two picks in that game. Um, Darnell Savage had one on a, on a, on a long interception. There was another one that they could, they almost had, or could have had. Yep. Yep. I, I, I am remembering one where it was a bad decision, but the throw was so bad that it was way over everyone's head deep down the field. And it was like, okay, that should have been picked off, but because the throw was so bad yeah. and, and you came out of that game going, man, I don't know what's going on with this team, but I, I'm glad I'm not them. And now it really feels like that narrative is flipped. Is is he Rogers just checked out, Peter? I mean, what? Because Christian Watson's been heating up the last two weeks. He has five touchdowns. So I know, obviously, there's been injuries across that entire receiving, you know, core. But at the same time, again, I don't know, man. Rogers just looks completely checked out. And your quarterback future is interesting now too, because you have a first round pick in Jordan Love waiting in the wings, but nobody's ever seen him before, and that's very unique too in the NFL nowadays. How many times have you seen a first round quarterback go this long into his, his career where you pretty much have no sample size? It's interesting to see like the long term future of Green Bay. As a quarterback fan, I'm very fascinated by that story. It, you know, it's not without precedent. We're talking yeah. about a quarterback currently under center for the Packers who did this same thing. Um, and we are in year three with the Jordan Love, just like Aaron Rodgers was in 2007 when he comes yeah. out against Dallas. I believe it was in week 11 and sure. lights the lights the world on fire in the second half. And everyone goes, oh, wait, this guy could be good. And I think it's easy to forget now how absolutely cheeks Rodgers was in regular season games. Before that, he had some nice moments in preseason. But like in the regular season games where he got extended playing time, he was terrible, like absolutely awful. And so it's it's it, revisionist history now to act like the Packers knew from day one that he was going to be the guy. They didn't. <laughs> and it really wasn't until that year three where they started to go wait, this guy's actually really good. And we heard from Devondre Campbell, interestingly, on a, in a, um, an interview that he did with another Packers player that Devondre Campbell said Jordan Love is better than a lot of quarterbacks currently starting in the NFL. And he he actually interrupted his teammate to say that. They were talking about, Dallin Levitt was talking about Jordan Love and saying, hey, we're really, we really like Jordan Love. We think he's really good. We like the looks that he's giving us. And Devondre Campbell interrupted him, was like, leaned into the microphone yeah. as if to say like, all right, listen to what I'm saying right now. Jordan Love is better than a lot of quarterbacks that are starting in the league. And I, I just, I kind of, I kind of filed that away. You know, I, I'm like, okay, let's, sure. let's see if we're going to get the opportunity to find out because I, I am fascinated to find out. Of course, that is not um, what you want to see in this game. If you're the Packers, because it means either Aaron Rodgers is hurt or you're getting right. blown out. I suppose it could be 35, 13 Packers. That seems, I don't know, pretty unlikely to me. Um, barring three or four injuries to the Eagles, we're, we're going to get into the matchups here yep. um, because there's plenty of plenty of stuff and fun stuff to dig into. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp Therapy Online. BetterHelp Therapy is an opportunity for you to be the best version of you, whatever that means for you, because everyone's struggle is different and everyone struggles differently at different times. And sometimes it's just about creating a better plan for yourself 
or having someone to talk through something important, an important decision. Sometimes it just helps to have someone there to listen when you want to talk. Life doesn't come with an owner's manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the challenges causing all of the issues, or at least some of the issues in your life. And BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It can, it's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere. Plus, it's 100% online. Whether or not you've been in therapy, uh, it is something that you can check out, an opportunity for you to be your best self. We want you to be your best self, just like you want your football team to be the best version of your team, something the Packers have not been able to do this season. I wonder if BetterHelp can help Green Bay. Learn more and save 10% on your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on. Louis, this is a, a fun week because I think this is, despite the records, still Aaron Rodgers. Right. This is still, I think, a, a team that, you know, if you look at some of the advanced models, they're still a, an upper half of the league team despite their record. And I, I'm interested from your perspective, when you look at, at the Packers, what weakness on the Eagles such that you think they have one? Are you most concerned about them exploiting? I'm still looking, and although the Eagles had a huge bounce back game in this area against the Indianapolis Colts, their run defense was awful the month before that. Without Jordan Davis, their 16th overall pick from Georgia, uh, went down with an ankle injury about a month ago, has been on IR since, still won't be back for another two weeks. Without Davis in the middle, they were getting destroyed by even rookie running backs like Damian Pierce and Brian Robinson. And it was bleeding on the inside. They were very susceptible in that way. Last week, they bounced back in a major way against Jonathan Taylor after he surpassed 40 yards on the first drive rushing. He only had 35 yards the rest of the way in the final three quarters. They signed in Donican Sue, who the Green Bay Packers, I'm sure, are very familiar with, of course. Yeah. And they also brought in Linval Joseph, who Packers fans are also very familiar with. Two big defensive tackles, formerly in the NFC North, and it paid off in a major way. They limited Taylor, but... It only was one week. The Packers have a dynamic duo in the backfield of Aaron Jones, of A.J. Dillon. Dillon is very physical, and the Eagles have struggled to tackle this year as well. So I'm very curious still to see if last week was a mirage or if it's going to be a consistent trend now where they have fixed that issue. So I'm really watching the Eagles' interior of the defensive line against that Packers duo at running back. I think uh, I have been saying this all year. If the Packers can run the ball, they can beat just about anybody because everything is predicated on, on that run game. Um, not just because on third and eight, they don't really have someone to go make a play for them. They need to be in third and fours, you know, kind of all day. Um, and, and, and frankly, there's opportunities for them. I think if they were willing to be more aggressive on fourth down than they've been to run the ball a little bit more on third and medium third and five and six, like, Aaron Jones is averaging five yards a carry. Even if you only get right. two or three, now you're in fourth and workable. It's fourth and two or three. You have everything in your playbook. That's just me on my on my soapbox a little bit. But their ability to run the ball unlocks everything for them. And we saw it against Dallas. Dallas is a very good defense and a good run defense. But they, they got eaten up by Green Bay's front. And I don't think that that's going to happen against Philadelphia. But it is, it is evidence to me. And the same thing happened against the Bills. 200 yards rushing. Um, on the Bills, the Bills have an excellent front seven, even if they play a lot of these light boxes. And guess what? Philadelphia, with with Gannon, they like to sit in those two high safety looks. Yes, they do. Um, and this was, you know, I was watching, um, I, I, I follow some people on Eagles Twitter. Um, they were, people were not happy with a lot of the things going on over the last few weeks with with what's going on with Jonathan Gannon and, and everything yeah. that this uh, this run defense has looked like for a lot of the same reasons Packer fans have been annoyed with with Joe Barry because it's that same sort of Fangio tree the 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 um, match quarters too high world and so I think if the Packers can run the ball I I think that is the the whole key because if you go back to that Washington game Eagles linebackers if there's a place on this defense where they have issues linebacker is one of them and the play action game for Washington was a big part of their success it was I agree. And and that's what Green Bay wants to do. They want to they want to run the ball and play action shot play over the top. And so if they can get to some of that stuff, that suddenly makes it easier to handle the pass rush for Philly, which is brutal. And I think that gives Aaron Rodgers better opportunities to find guys like Christian Watson down the field. Um, 
what is what is the thing for you, Louis, that when you look at this Packers team, you go, all right, the Eagles can attack them here. Yeah, I think when you look at the Eagles offense, I feel like it's kind of the same story, Peter. I mean, you look at the Packers run defense, and I feel like that's the more susceptible part of yeah. that unit. I mean, I think they've what given up the fifth most rushing yards in the NFL this year. Um, they're up there. So I definitely think, and as you mentioned, Rashawn Gary not going to be playing in this game. I think with the Eagles elite offensive line with Jalen Hurts, one of the best mobile quarterbacks in football, Miles Sanders also quietly having a career year when it comes to efficiency as a complete traditional running back. I think that's definitely the avenue to attack Green Bay on Sunday. But, you know, Peter, I'm also just very interested to see the battle of this trio of receivers the Eagles have and the trio of corners Green Bay has. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Quez Watkins going to get more targets without Dale Scottert playing. And then, of course, you have Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, and Razul Douglas, who Eagles fans are very familiar with as well. Seeing that battle is going to be interesting, too. Um, if they can get Devontae Smith, I feel like Razul Douglas, look, I, I was a big Zool guy when he was in Philly. Jim Schwartz never used him the right way, but one res kind of receiver he's always struggled with because he's a lengthier, stiffer corner yep. is those premier route runners. He always had issues with Amari Cooper. I feel like if the Eagles can find a way to get Devontae Smith lined up with Douglas in space, that's a mismatch to exploit in the air, but that, that that's a talented group of six players there that are going to be going at it on Sunday. So I'm excited to watch that match up through the air as well. Yeah. It, it sounds like Eric Stokes not going to be not going to play. He, he's, um, dealing with a, an injury that, oh, that ha came yeah. against Detroit. So um, the Packers, interestingly, have moved Darnell Savage into the slot, into that nickel role for a lot of their stuff. Rudy Ford Another is good playing. player, though. And and he, I think it is, it is you know, he's had some some hiccups here and there, but that's been a nice spot for him. I'm, I'm interested to see how the, the Eagles want to attack there. The Packer fans, you know, and, and Eagles fans may not be privy to the, the vicissitudes of, of Packers Twitter, but... Packer fans have been begging the Packers to match more often with Jair. This would be to me a great week to to try some different kinds of things because you can't you can't live in man coverage against the Eagles because Jalen Hurts will just eat you up on the ground and that was something that that we saw a lot um, in in previous seasons like Mike Patton and Dom Capers they they were like so stubborn about some of that stuff. The Packers even in some of these man match stuff the match quarter stuff that they use can still get a little. Um, eyes away from the quarterback at times. Yeah, yeah. And and this is something that that Philly has to worry about as well, right? Aaron Rodgers not the mobile quarterback um, that that he once was. You, you can't match. And so I think Jair against Devontae Smith, like Jair is the perfect cornerback to shut down someone like Devontae Smith. And I think Rasul is the kind of guy who's not going to get bodied out by AJ Brown. I was going to say, I think Zul actually matches up pretty well with Brown. I mean, that's like, the kind if, of receiver you, you wanted just, to go against. If, if you could just live in that matchup all day, yeah. great, but you can't. Like that's just right. not the, that's just not the league. And so that is, and then guess what? AJ Brown's going to play some of the slot. Devontae Smith is going to play some of the slot. They're going to move these yes. guys around. They're going to get them in motion. They're going to do all kinds of interesting things because this offense is so wonderfully designed that that, that makes it difficult. I, I'm also keeping an eye. This offensive line for Philly has been so good. If Jalen Hurts can just sit back there all day and decide to throw deep, like it's going to be tough. And the Packers, this was the biggest issue against the Titans. They give up 300 plus yards to Ryan Tannehill because they couldn't rush with four. And it became too easy for Ryan Tannehill to either ID the blitz or just say, okay, the, I know the blitz is coming. Here's my one-on-one -on -one matchup. And he played... I have to say, awesome. Like he played yeah. awesome football. He was he made accurate throws into coverage. Like the first the first drive where they score the touchdown, and they have third and long. He has Traylon Burks down the field, but he shot Nixon not in bad position. That has to be a really nice ball, and it was a really nice ball. He threw the ball down the field in particular, really well. Hit Traylon Burks later in the game um, on a, on a go route against Jair Alexander. Good coverage, but it's a perfect throw. And I think if you're if you're a modern defense now, you just have to force quarterbacks to be perfect. And that means you have to be able to pressure them too. And I don't know that this front four can right. do that because we haven't seen the same level of Kenny Clark. He, he to start the season, he was a, an MVP kind of player, like for this Packers defense, not a true MVP, but like he was the MVP of the defense. Mm -hmm. He was uh, looking like an all pro and just hasn't looked like that lately. And I can't explain why, because I don't, I don't know that he's hurt. He hasn't been on the injury report. Jaron Reed has been hit or miss. Um, six pressures against the Cowboys was dominant against that Dallas interior. 
And I don't think he's going to have the same sort of success against this Eagles team. And so that's, I was on a, a different podcast that I won't mention Eagles podcast where they said, you know, what is the key matchup? And I said, it's, it's the Packers offensive line against the, the Philly defensive line. If the Packers can block the Eagles, they have a chance to win. It's going to be tough. There's I a think a lot of you, depth with that Eagles unit. If you flip it, if Philly can block the Packers, the Packers can't win. I just, they just can't. Um, because it just makes life too easy for Philadelphia. They just have too many ways to beat you. And this defense with Rashawn Gary, it's just without Rashawn Gary, excuse me, it's just not going to be good enough. So yeah. And last thing tough. I'll say real quick about that, Peter, is yeah. I think, you know, Jalen hurts again, a top tier mobile quarterback, but outside of this past game with the Colts, the month before that, he really wasn't running a lot and he was still dealing within the pocket. This is a guy that, yeah. yes, he has more improved weapons, but he has much more advanced as a quarterback when it comes to accuracy, you know, anticipation, going through progressions. He, even from last year, it's night and day. So he's a threat still inside the numbers. What do you say we make some predictions? Let's do it, my man. First, Today's Locked On Eagles and Locked On Packers is brought to you by Bet Online, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. I love to bet on the NFL and college football, but if you're an NBA guy, college basketball, you can go bet on basketball. You've got the FIFA World Cup going on right now. You can bet on soccer, esports. They've got everything over at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like this one, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because Bet Online is where the game starts. Today's Lockdown Eagles and Lockdown Packers is also sponsored by Simply Safe. Here's a sports analogy for you. When it comes to burglars, your home is like the end zone and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. This is why we use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. It's at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. So you always know your home is safe. I love that you can control your system with your phone with the app, watching crystal clear HD live streams if you're your security cameras. Adds that extra bit of reassurance with 24 7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Simply Safe blankets your home and protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, door, HD security cameras for inside and outside your home. Smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. So Bet Online, which you mentioned, has our friends, uh, the Eagles, minus six and a half in this yep. game at home. Uh, minus 290 on the money line over under 46 and a half. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that is, um, that is a place where I am, I am looking at this game and going, I, I don't know if the Packers can get to 20 in this game. Like given the way that the offense looks right now, I'm just, I don't know how you can have confidence in it. I know they had a mini buy. And so maybe that it helps a little bit. That's more time with Christian Watson. Um, they, they released this depth chart and they put Sammy Watkins like fifth on it, which is probably good. Um, which may mean more opportunities for guys like Samori Toure, but Romeo Dobbs is still dealing with the injury. So I don't have a lot of faith in this Packers offense right now. So I think something in that 24, 17 range to me makes a lot of sense. I'm going to give the Packers a little bit of a bump because of that mini buy. Yeah. So I I actually like it. The the number I had all week was sort of was 2417. I like 2620. The Packers to cover but the Eagles to win because I just don't think they're going to be able to get enough stops and I'm, and put another way, I just don't think they're going to be able to score enough to stick with this Eagles. That said, I like the blueprint that the Colts and the the Washington Commanders put together the last two weeks, but I also think this Eagles coaching staff is smart enough to to have now you've had three weeks now um to come up with some answers i trust them to have some yep. and so i think this will be a competitive game a hard-fought game a good game 
I just don't think the Packers have enough right now to stick with the Eagles. What do you think, Louie? Yeah, I had a similar score prediction. I was heading into the week thinking around 27 to 20. The Eagles only scored 17 points last week against the Indianapolis Colts. But to me, the Eagles have had eight examples this year of where they're a flawless, elite, mistake-free offense. And they've only had two examples where they're really a sloppy team. Not having tight end Dallas Goddard obviously impacts them. But I think they're going to rebound from their performance last week. I think they can have success against the ground against Green Bay. I think they're so talented through the air that even though Green Bay's got a pretty talented secondary, they can still produce. I, you know, it's tough, Peter, when it comes to the other side of the ball because obviously Aaron Rodgers and that Packers offense looks nothing like they have in the past. But Jonathan Gannon randomly just reverts back into that guy that he was last year that plays very over, almost overly conservative against quarterbacks with a resume like Rodgers. I just hope that he is good at adjusting better situationally compared to last year because, you know, the Mahomes of the world, the Brady's, even the Derek Carrs and the Justin Herberts last year tore this team up. They have a lot more talent on defense. So I'm hoping for the best, but I want to see him. This is going to be the best quarterback they've played by far, even with Rodgers, who he is this year. So I'll still give him respect and say he hits that 20 mark. I'll say 27 20. So what'd you say the line was 46 and a half? I think I'd have the over then. And I'm and I'm going just under right forty six yeah. and a half. So I think it's fun to bet the over anyway. I always like going with the over. It, it, it is, but by the way, if you've been betting unders all year, you're making money because this I know, has been that's a great point. A crazy season yeah, that's a good where point. no <laughs> one is scoring points. So I was I was thinking about this. You mentioned that Rodgers is the best quarterback that the Eagles have faced, and then I yeah. went back and looked, and I I had checked this early in the year. Who do you think the second best quarterback the Eagles have faced this year is? I mean, from a talent perspective, it's probably Trevor Lawrence from a proven production standpoint. I'd say Kirk Cousins week two, and they kind of dominated him. So yeah, the Eagles, look, they've played some quality opponents from a roster standpoint, but when it comes to quarterbacks, there really haven't been a lot of good ones. Maybe Kyler Murray in that battle in Arizona. Yep. I would say Rodgers is the best one they faced. And it doesn't get a whole lot harder after this. They got Tennessee and they have their matchup against Dak Prescott later, but then they play Daniel Jones. It's That's one thing they've really benefited from with this schedule compared to last year. They have not played a lot of star signal callers. I, um, I'm feeling very good about my Eagles to win the NFC bet right now. Thank you very much. Um, I, I didn't bet them to win the Super Bowl, but I do have them to win the NFC. I I think I have them to be the one seed as well. Uh, so I'm I'm They're feeling pretty good about that. Um, but I think this is this is a game where if if all of a sudden we're looking up in the fourth quarter and it's and it's 21 24 and Aaron Rodgers has the ball driving, I'm not gonna be surprised. I'm just not. Yeah, me too. And and on the other side, if this if I look up in the fourth quarter and it's 35 to 13, Eagles, I'm just also not gonna be surprised. It's just the the Packers have been a, a, a bizarre team this year. Um, and I don't, I, I've, I've had a bad feel for them really all season. So if, if you're a crazy better, that's looking for any kind of edge, this is over the top superstition. The Eagles are wearing their all black uniforms. They're unveiling their black helmets on Sunday night. They do not lose in those jerseys, Peter, their record in the black jerseys, the last five years, pretty incredible. Obviously that's a massive stretch. Just saying though, if you're looking I for any it. kind no, of no, edge, I love that it. online, there you go. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, 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 I like why do you think the chargers went to the powder blues full time? Because they did not lose in the powder blues saying. when they were the alternates. So I, I, I love it. Um, I hate that they're wearing the all blacks because the all blacks are absolute Look fire. Good, play good, Peter. It's, it's a real thing. Confidence is everything. Listen, I, I say that all the time with my golf game. It helps me sometimes and not other times. Um, and, and usually it's all black that I, I wear that an I, arm sleeve, just walking around the house, man. Sometimes you just got to look good. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right. Uh, Sunday night, uh, we will we will be coming to you. I will be going live. Are you guys going live after the game? Yes, we are. So check us out on YouTube live after the game. Otherwise, in your podcast feed um, on Monday. We'll talk to you soon.